Grassley Ranking Member Feinstein and distinguished members of this committee. Thank you for the opportunity to... China is driven by a desire to be at the forefront of 10 critical technologies laid out in its Made in China 2025 plan. No one begrudges a nation that generates the most innovative ideas and from them develops the best technology. But we cannot tolerate a nation that steals the fruits of our brain power. And that is just what China is doing to achieve its development goals. And that same year, having never made a single computer chip, the playbook is simple. Rob, replicate, and replace. Rob the American company of its intellectual property, replicate that technology, and replace the American company in the Chinese market and one day in the global market. It's no wonder that from 2011 to 2018, more than 90% of the department's cases alleging economic espionage on behalf of a state involve China. Costs the United States annually. Does the increase in criminal cases mean that Chinese are intensifying efforts to steal uh, American, uh, from American companies more so than what we've known uh, over a long period of time? I think, um, Senator, that their activity has been steadily decreasing. The cases we've brought, sorry, increasing. The cases we've brought in the last nine months are the results of investigations that have been taking place over a number of years. So they don't reflect just the last nine months worth of activity. I think what they reflect is starting several years ago, a real focus uh, on the part of the department, on the part of the FBI to investigate these cases and to bring these prosecutions. Narrative of cost free speech, yes. Do we have students from China who come here and uh, are sent to steal our intellectual property? Sir, I don't know um, that the students themselves... Well, the FBI director says we do. Well, and I'm sorry, let me clarify. I don't know if the students themselves decide that they're going to come to the U.S. to steal the sensitive research. What I've seen is that the Chinese government, in particular intelligence or security services, will utilize, lean on those students, and in effect say, if you want your tuition paid, if you want to continue the opportunity that we're affording you to continue your education at a higher education institution in the U.S., well, then you better not come home empty-handed. He next, but he's going to come and chair for me, so I think I'll call on Senator. Uh, you alluded to some of these this morning on how the espionage that's being conducted by China is not a spy versus spy paradigm, but it's an all of government exercise. Uh, could you expand on that and also in your answer, explain why state-owned enterprises in China and other companies that look to be a freestanding entity um, really are not. The Communist Party reigns supreme. And they have a, a great ability to lean on people, some who are winning, some who are not winning in their society, to again carry out their aims. So whether they be researchers, scientists, students, businessmen, otherwise tourists, the Chinese intelligence services don't hesitate to ask those people to carry out their aims. They just don't, they just don't rely on spies. In regards to state-owned enterprises or really any Chinese businesses, what we have to understand again is this idea that the Communist Party reigns supreme. It means those businesses ultimately are beholden to the Chinese government. And so what happens when the Chinese government asks those businesses to engage in activity contrary to U.S. interests? Those businesses have a choice. If they want to continue to do business, they, they basically follow the order of the Chinese government. If they, if they decide not to follow those orders, they're at the risk of being shut down. Senator Klobuchar. Uh, thank you very much. Uh